uh, we welcome you all to today's uh, cultural program. Uh, today we will first have a talk by an esteemed guest, uh, uh, Vidya Bhavani Suresh, on demystifying Carnatic music. Uh, Vidya Bhavani Suresh is a renowned Bhatnatyam exponent and musicologist. She's an excellent spe public speaker in English and Tamil. She's the author of Demystifying Fine Arts series of Skanda publications, which has touched its 43rd title this year. Uh, Vidya is a qualified company secretary, and she quit her profession 22 years ago to start Skanda Publications with her husband B.A. Suresh to popularize art and culture. She holds a master's degree in folklore from the well-known St. Xavier's College, Palayankote, and she's a recipient of a two-year fellowship from the Department of Art and Culture, Government of India, for folklore research. Her biggest contribution to Bhatnatyam is Tamil Ilakimum Bharatamum, covering 50-plus items extracted from Tamil literature, like Thirumurugat Tupade, Paripadal, etc. These were tuned, choreographed, and sung by Vidya herself. Vidya is the mother of three children, Mahita, and twins, Harshita and Nipun. We welcome you today, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Prahalad, uh, for that nice introduction. Uh, very good morning to all of you. I'm uh, sure you must be wondering, I mean, why Carnatic music? You've all come from another part of the country and uh, I'm sure you had a great time. Prahalad was telling me that, you know, some tour of the city and all was organized, so you got to see the city, so which is great. So I'm sure you must be wondering then, why Carnatic music is chosen as a subject uh, about which, uh, you know, uh, so anybody should be speaking to you. So I am here because I am an expert in that. Because Carnatic music is part of the Chennai experience. It is so ingrained in the culture of Chennai that there are a lot of people who come to Chennai during December to be a part of the Carnatic music scene. That's my son. Hi. He is in the third year here. Okay. So, um, Carnatic music has a very long history. I can start talking about it and I will sound like the Wikipedia entry. Let's not do that. Let's talk about today. Carnatic music is relevant because it is here with us today. Uh, the entire December month is called the season because every Sabha will be organizing. If there is an auditorium like this, you will see a Carnatic music concert. So, it is a very happening thing in Chennai. And as I told you, a lot of people come, it's called the Margari season, a lot of people come here to enjoy that. So now that you are here, you have seen Chennai and you are going to go back, go back with a little bit of Carnatic music info so that you can say that I had a whiff of that experience too. So that's what makes it relevant. So because I am, apart from being a, a musicologist, I'm, I'm also a folklorist and we are always inspired by the present, what is there with us all around. So that, that's a big source of inspiration. The one tragedy of Carnatic music, if I may call it that, is that there is a misconception that Carnatic music can be enjoyed only by people who have learnt it. Now, if everyone who enters a bank has to do banking only if he is a banker, imagine how absurd the situation is. I don't know the first thing about interest rates. I cannot understand the different products. I can still go, deposit a check, maybe put an FD, I can draw cash, I can operate an ATM. The fact is that the number of users in any discipline is much, much, much wider than the number of experts. That is how it should be. If the users are expected to have expert knowledge, they will be competing with the experts. That is an absurd scenario even on the face of it. But unfortunately, over the years, we've always been told that if you have to enjoy Carnatic music, you should know Carnatic music. Let's first take that thought out of your mind. That is not a prerequisite at all. Now the question is, what is necessary? Now th that is, something is necessary, right? So the question is, what is necessary? I'll tell you of a, you know, very interesting experience that had with me, uh, that I had, uh, that happened to me uh, four, five years back when the whole family went to watch uh, Mission Impossible 6. So we are not actually a film going family as such. So I was very excited that, you know, all of us, five of us, so we, we actually uh, had the time, uh, you know, to go for uh, something. So I was more excited uh, by that. Uh, I did not even for a minute think of what, I, what I'm going to watch. I just go and sit. I didn't understand a thing. I didn't even understand who they, I, I knew Tom Cruise was the hero. 
but i didn't know which fellow was a sidekick which one was the villain there were three big ball they kept calling it plutonium and it all just went over my head so then i am turning to one side my husband is watching like this this side nipun is sitting watching like this his two sisters all of them are glued to the screen i felt like a bloody fool sitting there understanding nothing i was ch- i'm so much nice i was just waiting for that interval to happen i just pulled out my phone and i read the whole story only then did i realize that it was the sixth of a whole series of movies and then these characters had been introduced in the previous versions i mean the, the previous installments so that is why people could understand so then i tried to understand the context once i knew the context after that interval i actually understood what was happening believe me the moment that movie was streamed on ott i sat and actually i watched it from start to finish that is when i understood what was happening in front of me so what do you think was lacking when i went inside i did not have an awareness of the context and the format that's it i i did need not have known how the film was shot but i should have understood the basic thread which was lacking in me that is what we are going to do now i am just going to tell you that basic thread that you need to understand a carnatic music concert if you were to step into a concert and not feel fish out of water so let us start with what are the basic concepts first is raga you are with me all of you are with me right second is tala and third is compositions that's it there are only three aspects to carnatic music raga tala and compositions once you have got a grasp of these two the raga structure of carnatic music is the most beautiful part of the whole thing then we have the tala and then we have the compositions so let us start with raga any of you have any idea what a raga is some basic idea anything you want to say okay since none of you have said raga is nothing it's just a melodic structure raga is the basic melodic structure i'm sure you must have heard that music consists of seven notes seven notes so now let's see what those seven notes are what i have done now uh, see prahala told me that none of you are introduced to music so i'm i'm starting from the scratch what i have now done is i have just put on this shruti which is the bass pitch now this is going to be my bass pitch so then sa that is what it is telling me that is the first note now let's build on the seven notes sa ri ga ma pa da ni seven notes and then we go to sa sa don't you remember some eighth or ninth standard chemistry lesson of periodic table law of octaves some big memory that so what is an octave it's that eight notes in carnatic music what we say is we say seven notes and then the next starts so it is sa ri ga ma pa dha ni this entire stretch we call it sai sai means it is exactly octave so this is the main we call it the medium sai so we can also go below sa ni da pa that is a key sai pa da ni sa ri ga ma that is the top sai so basically whatever we sing operates in three octaves the lower the middle and the high now ragas are countless with just seven notes how do you have countless ragas we just have to look into the english dictionary i was actually wanting to do a google search in the morning to find out the final word count as of today plus 1 to lakhs how many lakhs whatever it all comes from 26 letters of the alphabet the same logic with just these seven notes we can have countless ragas now the point is a b c d is not structured as a b c d it is structured in a particular format 
So now the question is, how are these ragas structured? There must be a, a format of structuring. There are ragas which contain all the seven notes. Like, Sari Ga Ma Pa Dha Ni Sa Sa Ni Da Pa Ma Ga Ri Sa We went in one route, we came back in the same route. Mirror images, I write Sarigama Padani, put a mirror and then it's same to same. Such ragas, which are mirror images and which contain all the seven notes, are called the parent ragas. The parent ragas are finite. There are only 72 parent ragas available. And that is actually a, a, a brilliant uh, work of our ancestors, you, drawing uh, permutations and combinations. It is exactly your 10th standard or 11th standard maths. If I had the time and, uh, you know, it was a more detailed session, I would have actually drawn it on the board and shown you how we arrive at the number 72. It is brilliant. Our music is so dependent on maths and science and geometry. It is not 71, it is not 73. It is 72 for a reason. So these 72 are called the parent ragas. It is also known by the name of Melakarta ragas. From these 72, we can derive endless number of ragas, derive Janya, I think the names make sense, Janya 1 that is born. So if you derive a raga from a parent raga, that becomes a Janya. So basically, the entire raga world can be broadly divided into two parts. One is Melakarta and one is Janya. Now this raga that I, I was showing you, it is called Maya Malava Gaula. In the Melakarta scheme, it is raga number 15. Every, believe me, every raga is numbered and not just that the ragas are numbered, the brilliance of our uh, Carnatic music is such that the name of every raga hides its number. So if I say Maya Malava Gaula, the term Ma and Ya, based on the alpha, I mean Hindi letters, like ma has a value, ya has a value, yara lava ka jo ya hai na, uska value, it is given the value 1. Papa, baba, ma, pancho aata hai, to uska value hai 5. To ma, ya, ho jata hai 5, 1. We are supposed to reverse it. To aapko a jata hai 1, 5. It's an amazing system where 72 ragas have 72 names hiding the number. So, sare ragas ka aap pehle and dusra wo jo syllable hai, pick kar lije, uska number aap dekh lije, it is, it is a very uh, simple system, Hindi mein jo aap dekhte hai, usme se number pick kar lije, invert kar lije, so from the name you can arrive at the number, from the number you can make out the name, so it's, it's a very highly scientific uh, system of music. So, now this raga is placed at number 15. Now, what are the ragas that can be called the janya of this? If it has to be a janya of this, the first rule is it has to have the notes in this raga. So that brings us to the variance in notes. Har note ka do do variant hota hai. Sari, sari. Are you able to make out the difference in the frequency? The sounds are different, right? Sari, sari. Saga, Saga, Sama, Sama, Pa. So, do do variants we have seen, Sa and Pa are our constants. There are no variants in Sa and Pa. Sa and Pa are like the base on which you, it's like the landing note, the basic note. Every other note has two variants. So, abhi aap simple maths count karke dekh lijiye. You have seven notes. Out of the two notes have no variants. 5 notes have 2 to variants each, that brings us to 12 notes. Our entire game of Carnatic music works around these 12 notes. So that is called the basic 12 note structure. So now what happens is when a child enters the class, they start off with Maya Malagola, which is supposed to be, it was, you have to thank Purandara Dasa of the 14th century, who designated Maya Malagola as the basic raga for a lot of reasons. So it is, uh, let's not go into it, it is, uh, not, not relevant now, but it's a very comfortable raga for children to learn. So, when we start the classes, we start off with uh, Maya Malagola. So, Maya Malagola is like your friend. 
it stays with you till your basic learning is over so now uh, in uh, maya malagola if uh, how, how do the um, exercises start the beauty of uh, the exercises is it trains a student in two three things one is of course voice you know you have to open your mouth and sing and you know actually be able to move from one note to the other and second thing is memory carnatic music trains you in memory let me just tell you how there is a very uh, sweet and simple exercise which goes sa ri ga ma pa ga ma pa pa da ni sa ri sa ni da pa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa so it starts the second is sa ri ga ma pa ga ma pa pa da ni sa ri sa sa ri sa sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri sa ni da pa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa sa ri ga ma pa ga ma pa pa the third will go da ni sa ri sa da ni sa ri ga ri sa ri sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa pick the second da ni sa ri sa sa ri sa sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa pick the first da ni sa ri sa ni da pa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa sa ri ga ma pa ga ma pa pa so the kid can't dream you have to remember the third and then the second and then the first it it will go on da ni sa ri ga ri sa ri sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri sa sa ri sa sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri sa ni da pa da ni sa ri ga ma ga ri sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri ga ri sa ri sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri sa sa ri sa do you realize that you know, as the student learns the exercise gets longer and then it, it goes up to five levels da ni sa ri ga ma pa ma ga ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri ga ma ga ri sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri ga ri sa ri sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri sa sa ri sa sa ri sa ni da pa ma pa da ni sa ri sa ni da pa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa sa ri ga ma pa ga ma pa pa so that is why it is said that when you learn carnatic music you just not learn music you also train your mind to memorize to remember and to recall and to form a pattern so you must remember now i sang pa now i sing ma now i come to ga now i come to ri and now i come to sa this is one kind of a formatting that children get to learn another more interesting format is a format is set with one set of notes you keep putting notes and then moving forward sa ri ga ma ga ri sa ri ga ri sa ri ga ma the mood to ri ri ga ma pa ma ga ri ga ma ga ri ga ma pa ga ma pa da pa ma ga ma pa ma ga ma pa da so if you are looking at the structure it is note 1 to sa ri ga ma ga ri 1 2 3 4 2 1 1 sa ri ga ri 1 2 3 2 1 sa ri ga ma 1 2 3 4 1 it is a format you fix the format and then you keep moving note after note so ri ga ma pa ma ga ri ga ma ga ri ga ma pa ga ma pa da pa ma ga ma pa ma ga ma pa da ma pa da ni da pa ma pa da pa ma pa da ni pa da ni sa ni da pa da ni da pa da ni sa and then descend sa ni da pa da ni sa ni da ni sa ni da pa ni da pa ma pa da ni da pa da ni da pa ma da pa ma ga ma pa da pa ma pa da pa ma ga pa ma ga ri ga ma pa ma ga ma pa ma ga ri ma ga ri sa ri ga ma ga ri ga ma ga ri sa the beauty of these basic exercises is that i would tr- say that they are amazing compositions but they are always treated as music lessons so we just uh, you know put them to the background very just lessons but lessons are music themselves so it's a it's a i mean uh, that's just a thought so now we have seen what are your melakarta ragas and next uh, we come to uh, the janya ragas janya ragas are ragas which are derived from the melakartas so sa ri ga ma shall i pull out some notes sa ri ma i've pulled out ga sa ri ma pa da sa i pulled out ni also sa da pa ma ga ri sa so what is it i have done sa ri ma pa da sa sa da pa ma ga ri sa so i have gone by pulling out two notes i've come back i've just pulled out one note so what does this tell you this can tell you that these are ragas which are not complete as in they don't have all the notes and they are not mirror images too so there are two concepts that emerge from this i can go in one way it is like one way traffic on roads 
आप ऐसे जाके ऐसे आ सकते हैं ऑल सच थिंग्स आर पॉसिबल इन जेनियर आदर्स नाउ दिस वॉज लीनियर नो यू वी वेंट लाइक दिस वी केम लाइक दिस वॉट इफ इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट is there is there a necessity that we have to be systematic we have to go one note after the other that is not so let us look at another raga which goes sa re ma pa ni sa sa ni pa ma ri ga ma ri sa so what did we do now we went in a linear fashion we came back in a zigzag fashion this raga is called gavla sa re ma pa ni sa sa ni pa ma re ga ma re sa so if we are listening to a composition in gaula this re ga ma re sa will be reiterated again and again otherwise where is the signature if you are not it's like you know you go to a hotel and there is a signature dish you expect the signature dish to be there otherwise you will say if if uh, if, if uh, some uh, restaurant specializes in say a particular kind of sweet you will buy everything but you will say let me still have that signature that is why i came all the way so if you are going to gaula then you have to show gaula so whenever composers use the raga they will use the re ga ma re sa move so now we have understood that there are ragas there are uh, melakarta ragas and janya ragas and janya ragas come in different forms as i said linear they twisted and uh, you know not following mirror images sab chalta hai in the janya world sab chalta hai everything so that is why we have countless number of janyas anything you want me to clarify at this point we now move to the next aspect of carnatic music which is tala tala is a rhythm if you see any composition you can take it it will follow a basic tala pattern i will start with the basic lesson which is shri ganadha the tala is rupakam सिंदूरावर्ण करुण सागर करीवदना द रिथम दैट यू सी नाउ दैट दैट सी इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वर्ड हियर इफ यू सी रिथम इज नॉट समथिंग दैट जस्ट इज फॉलोड इट इज ऑल्सो शोन द शोइंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन कर्नाटक म्यूजिक So that is why when you see musician seated you will see that if i'm sitting i will be putting it on my thigh like this because the way the tala is expressed is very important there is a count like this and there are ways of expressing so as you perform you are supposed to express the tala correctly and based on the the way the tala is expressed talas have names like this structure is called a lagu this is called a dhritam let's now move on to compositions compositions are what make a carnatic music concert what it is we have had composers who have been there for 400 500 years and we have thousands of compositions in carnatic music compositions uh, of varying sizes compositions of, uh, of in, we have compositions in tamil we have compositions in malayalam telugu kannada the repertoire is very vast so what happens is if you are seated and you uh, you start your carnatic concert you start with a varnam which is uh, generally the opening piece if it is not a varnam it is a piece on lord uh, vinayaka it's a convention and then one composer after the other till we arrive at the main piece the main piece is the piece which tests the metal of a musician because in um, musicians parlance it is usually asked iniki enna main but at, what is the main today when they say main they mean the central piece the central piece is a piece which goes on for about uh, 40 45 minutes and uh, they start out with a raga if a like for example i was talking to you about maya malagola i was talking to you about notes instead of that the same uh, maya malagola is given to you as a raga let's say it is it is just the notes but it is given in the form of a like a m pa ma ga ga ma pa ma ga re pa ma ga re ga re sa could be an opening phrase tan na la tan you know 
the resonance from the tambura that is what makes it very meditative na 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 so the musician goes on building like that and a very elaborate exposition at least about 10 to 15 minutes and then the composition and after that we have a, a, a format called the kalpana swarans kalpana swarans are just creative uh, uh, notes that are sung on the stage improvised on the stage by the musician that is exactly why you cannot just learn compositions and become a musician there is a lot of improvisation that happens after that the uh, concert proceeds to smaller and shorter pieces which are called tukuda hindi word tukuda all of you know that is the same word which is used here a, a tukuda in fact there have been people who have conducted tukuda festivals because the tukudas are very famous you know there are songs which have been immortalized as these short songs so generally after the main uh, the the um, mridangas or the ghatam player or if there is a ganjira player they are just uh, given the opportunity to have a pure percussion slot and after that the tukudas come and with that the concert comes to a close so once you enter a concert you will uh, get to hear about uh, uh, an hour uh, hour and a half some detailed concerts go on for two hours of pure music which will be the singer the violinist on one side, the mridangist, and of course, uh, nowadays, these are all electronic versions. That's something which I really feel bad, because earlier times, we had a person sitting with a tambura and actually playing that. So this is uh, about the uh, concert uh, format. So anything uh, that you would like me to tell you before I talk about one or two other things and I wind up? because the idea is to just introduce you to Carnatic music. So if there's anything specific, fine. Before we close, there are just two concepts which are very relevant uh, to the form. One is Sangadi, which you will hear very often. A Sangadi is an elaboration of, a, of a, uh, I mean, I have talked to you so much, I have uh, not even uh, sung a composition and showed you. I will just, uh, sing a very brief uh, composition and explain the concept of Sangadi. Now this is in the Raga Todi. It goes, Ninno Vena Sukha Mogana. This is the opening line. In the second repetition, Ninno Vena Sukha Mogana. We elaborated it a little more. The third time, Ninno Vena Sukha Mogana. It is the same words, but it is sung in three different styles. Each is called a Sangadi. Ninno Vena Sukha Mogana. Neeraja Nayana Rama. Neeraja can you make out that as the song progresses, the repetitions get different? This is another repetition. It is the same words, but it is just go on embellishing it. It's like, you know, going on adding more and more decoration to a cake. Ninno Vena Sukha Mogana Neeraja Nayana Rama So, can you see that it is becoming more and more complex as it goes? And then it's wound up. Ninno Vena Sukha Mogana Neeraja Nayana this is a pallavi. So you just wind up the song. And then the next one. Manna sukhyam to ananda mai mai pulaka rimcha kala. This is the anu pallavi. The second segment. Back to the pallavi. Ninnu vena sukhamu gana niraja 
So every time you sing another segment, you come back to the Pallavi. Ninnu vina sukha muga ne niraj nayena. So the the bigger compositions are more complex. From very simple, what I sang at the beginning, Shri Ganadha Sindhu Ravarna. The very simple songs that children are taught in the beginning, as you go higher and higher, the compositions become more complex. So as you are uh, sitting and uh, you know listening to a Carnatic music composition, what you will be listening would be these more uh, complex songs. So I guess uh, we have come to a, a, you know, gone through an entire journey of. Uh, the uh, concert. Uh, we have understood the basic concepts like raga and tala, and uh, I guess I would be happy to wind up my talk here. Anything, Prahlad, you would like me? To? Anything else that you would like to know? I'm more than happy to answer or clarify. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the. Uh informative session it was my nice but uh, one thing i always amaze like uh, whenever uh, i go through these informations and uh, try to uh, understand a few and remember a few uh, but when the music is actually it is more better to uh, stand at the corner and enjoy it as a magic rather than understanding the concepts whether it decreases this whole knowledge base decreases the enjoyment or it adds on that's a wonderful question see I uh, I would uh, uh, say that don't get into too much technique. A little bit technique is always good. See, for example, there are people who fret over identifying ragas. I always say in every book of mine I have written, don't try to identify ragas. Trying to identify ragas robs the joy of music listening. I fully agree with that. If you see in a traditional Carnatic music concert, the, the, uh, generally, there is no convention of announcing the item. Either the composer's name, the item, the raga, the tala, nothing is announced. The singer just starts. Now, immediately the person starts. The Kambodhya, the Kiravani, the People go into one frenzy trying to identify. And it's like a big game. Who, who is going to identify first? And, you know, if there are people who are seasoned listeners, you can hear the buzz. You, you, Ranjani, Ranjani, it'll go. Now, that is something I don't like at all. What I feel is that there is no need to test your knowledge of Carnatic music at every concert. That much I agree. But a little basic knowledge always helps. Because it will help you understand it better. I fully agree that the mesmerism of any art form is in the overall experience. It is in the magic of music itself. But no harm in understanding the lyrics. If you know that uh, something about Saraswati is being sung like, Shri Saraswati Hite. It is good to understand that it is something about Saraswati. So, Andamadri, if you, if you know that it is in this sala, it is in this raga, your depth with the item will increase. So, it is a, it is a mix of both. You should not, I, I think I started my talk by saying that don't try to achieve an expert level. But a user level is always necessary. There is no need to be totally unaware of something and, you know, like all of you are from, uh, you know, the northern part of India. If I'm going to watch a form from uh, your uh, place, I would love to know who has choreographed the item or who the composer is or in what context it is performed. That will help me appreciate it better. Beyond that, I don't need to know anything. So that user level always works well. That's a very nice question because the dividing line is very thin. When you switch from the user level and try to become a wannabe expert and uh, you know start feeling insecure, we should never push ourselves that far. Otherwise, an intro into any form always works positive because it will help you appreciate, uh, I won't say the word nuances because then you will say it is the expert, the overall uh, you know, experience better. See, it helps if questions come up because th that kind of 
uh, you know helps answer what would be relevant to you so yeah can you I will sing a composition. It is. Uh, uh, it is. I, I don't know if I should call it complex or otherwise. But this is a very favorite song. Arula vendum thaye. I I will explain the reason why it is special because it says it is. It is also something relevant to all of you. The words go porulum. Pugarum porundi vara. Porul is money. See, the composer breaks the myth that artists must live in poverty. Why should artists live in poverty? So he says, Porulum pugarum. Pugar is fame. Porundi vara. I want to have everything. Buviil nan in this earth. Talay sirandu vara. Talay sirandu is I should, I should have a great life. Uh, you know, holding my head high. And then it goes. So it is a prayer for all students. I mean, all of us want that, right? Then the uh, charanam goes, kalaygal karkavum. I should learn the arts. Arts is studies, anything. Karpane shayavum. I should be creative. When you do your amazing science projects, that is also creativity. Creativity need not always be in arts. Every field comes with creativity. Kalaygal karkavum. Karpane shayavum. Kalam kadavamal. Karuttai tiruttavum. That is the best part. Kalam is time. Kadavamal. Without any delay. Karuttai tiruttavum. If there are any wrong ideas in my head, let me correct it at the right time. Kalam kadavamal. Karuttai tiruttavum. Ulagile nalla unmaigal peshavum. In this world, let me always speak the truth. Unnai ninaikavum. Let me think of you. Urudiyai varavum. Let me live with confidence. Urdi is mental strength, confidence. This is the lyric. Now I have told you the lyric. I am not making you an expert. But when you hear, it is in the Raga Saramati. So if you hear the song with this context, you will enjoy it better. And yes, it has Sangati. So it will classify under your complex song. Arola vendum thaye Arola vendum thaye Arola vendum thaye Arola vendum thaye Angayar kani niye Yena karola vendum thaye Angayar kani niye Yena karola vendum thaye Dum taaye angayar kani niye ye na karula ve dum taaye angayar kani niye ye na karula ve dum taaye angayar kani niye ye na karu Love and um, taaye. Porulum pugarum, porundi vaya. Porulum pugarum, porundi vaya. Porulum pugarum, porundi vaya. Bhuvi gilna thale shirandu vaya Porulum pugarum porundi vaya Bhuvi gilna thale shirandu vaya Arula vendum thaye Kalegal karkavum karpane shayavum Kalam kadavamal karuttai tiruttavum Kalegal karkavum karpane shayavum Kalam kadavamal karuttai tiruttavum Kalegal karkavum karpane shayavum Kalam kadavamal karuttai tiruttavum Ulagile nalla unmaigal peshavum Ulagile nalla 
பொம்மைகள் பேசவும் உன்னிலே நினைக்கவும் உறுதியாய் வாழவும் உலகிலே நல்ல உண்மைகள் பேசவும் உன்னை நினைக்கவும் உறுதியாய் வாழவும் அருள வேண்டும் தாயே அங்கயர் கணினியே எனக்கரு வேண்டும் ஆதி <laughs> which is in beats of 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 when you go back and uh, you know you switch on your uh, music on your phone whatever apps there are try to just count the beats most of the songs you hear most of the film songs most of the songs will be in beats of 8 8 is like uh, the most uh, common number aadi thala so there's a famous rajinikanth song na ettu kulla ulagam irukkiramayya கர்நாடிக் மியூசிக்கே எட்டுக்குள்ள தான் இருக்கு ஓ ஐ சாரி ஐ ஸ்விச் தம் யூ பீப்பிள் டோன்ட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் கர்நாடிக் மியூசிக் பூரா ஏ ஆத்மே பந்த பட் தெர் ஆர் அதர் நம்பர்ஸ் வி ஹாவ் த்ரீ ரூபக்கா அண்ட் தெர் ஆர் டூ வெரி இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் தாலாஸ் கண்ட சாப்பு விச் இஸ் ஃபைவ் ஒன் டூ ஒன் டூ த்ரீ ஒன் டூ தெர் இஸ் அன் அசிமெட்ரிக்கல் தாலா வி ஹாவ் அ தாலா மிஸ்டர் சாப்பு தீஸ் ஆர் ஆல் ஓவர் அண்ட் அபவ் தீஸ் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் செவன்டி ஃபைவ் பிகாஸ் தீஸ் ஆர் யூ நோ இன் லா தேஸ் ஏனோ கன்வென்ஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ரூல்ஸ் ஐ திங்க் தெர் ஆர் டூ திங்ஸ் லைக் தட் from my acs days like that these are conventions these chaputalas are more by convention so you have 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 that is in 7 1 2 1 2 3 that is in terms of 5 arulvai so 1 2 1 2 3 so words go like this hmm arulvai angayer kanniye arulvai can't you see how the words fit into that five arulvai hanga yerkanniye ennannaye so the rhythm and the words it is that is what creates that uh, magic and uh, as i told you uh, preceded by the raga and then followed by the kalpana swaram it's uh, it's truly magical and uh, as i told you these little things will help you understand or appreciate that magic better anything else yes yeah use the mic uh ma'am if you see in the uh, tamil music industry most of the singers are trained in classical carnatic hmm. music so uh, like since i am from chennai i uh, i knew this uh, like Hmm. uh like uh, learning carnatic music makes a difference while singing pop music and western music so can you explain the reason why it is like uh, see uh how should i word it see any form of music opens your throat it's very simple as simple as that the more you sing as, uh, didn't i tell you about the exercises which children learn like if you see there is a janda varshay say sa sa ri ri ga ga ma ma ri ri ga ga ma ma pa pa see we are trained to spell every note twice it's not as easy as you think in higher speed sa sa ri ri ga ga ma ma sa sa ri ri ga ga ma ma we are trained to sing in three speeds sometimes earlier days teachers used to say five speeds and i have heard that uh, i'm talking of three octaves it seems uh, some singers used to sing five octaves it seems like a miracle i don't even know how it's possible all that opens your voice see once your voice is open you can sing any form of music only thing is that when you switch from one form to other there will be certain rules which you may have to follow like pop music may call for a certain kind of a voice throw or voice modification carnatic music may call for another kind of a voice throw hindustani it may be slightly different but these are only subtle differences so once you understand one form the reverse is also true see people who are trained in other forms will be able to understand our form better it's a, it is like your own uh, you know subjects if you know one subject learning the ancillary is that much easier no 
I think that's how it functions, right? Uh, now, especially with uh, you know all the lines blurring between subjects, interdisciplinary studying is becoming a big thing. This is also a kind of interdisciplinary study that you learn one form of music. But only thing is, my uh, one uh, suggestion to any person would be that when you learn one form, learn it fully, and don't judge any other form. Don't sit in judgment. When you learn, when you switch to a new form, go with the respect that you are trying to understand something new. That will make you a good learner and a good professional. So, because you, I, I have learned it like this. So, this is different. Why is it different? It's a version. My professor in folklore always used to say, there's no right and wrong. All are versions. And if a version is very different, we call it a variation. So when we used to analyze stories, uh, then our rituals or everything. We, we have done a lot of work on all this. So, then if it is performed differently, the first reaction would be that we perform it like this. So, this is wrong. It is not wrong. It is a version. And so then sir would say that if it is totally different, then a version can become a variation. But even that is an accepted thing. It is not wrong. There is no right and wrong. So my feeling is that whatever kind of music, if you are really interested, even a wee bit interested, and you get the opportunity to learn some form of music, learn it. Whatever the guru has to teach you, just grab it. Knowledge doesn't come always. You just have to grab it when it comes. How did I learn folklore? How did I even... My mom was director of All India Radio Tirunelveli. I was studying ACS. There was no reason for me to learn for, to get into MA folklore. I just saw that this was the only college in the country offering this course. And she got posted there at, a little before the academic year. I said, I'm going to grab it. I did two courses together because one is not a university course. So you, you can do it. Along with ACS, which had nothing to do with commerce and law, and I got the chance to do folklore, I just grabbed it. Because that, that will give me a, a tremendous depth into art and culture. So what I'm saying is, so, and a course like this tells you that every art should be respected. So, every art form, what your grandma sings at home, respect that music that has traveled through years. As your grandma talks to you or your grandpa talks to you, they just come up with a, with a proverb or something. Grab it. That is your roots. It, that again must have traveled thousand years. You never know. What travels through word of mouth is amazing. So, what I am trying to say is that any form of music will help you learn another form as long as your mindset is right. So you should be mentally prepared that once you move from one form to the other, that is an equally big form. Do you realize you put in 10 years to learn this? So when you go there, ultimately it is a voice and one form opens your voice. So you will perform better. And see, basic concepts, if you see, now that you ask me, Explain that it shows it shows F dot. <coughs> F dot is actually Western music notation. It pertains to the Nalra Katashruti of Carnatic music. So uh, the entire uh, tambura it is calibrated with the Western notation. It will say A, which is our six. So music, what uh, what I wanted to impress upon you is that music forms overlap. That is what I was saying. So there are a lot of concepts in musical forms uh, which actually overlap. The concept of uh, swaras is there in Hindustani music also. The raga concept is there. So, learning one system of music and learning it well will always help you grasp another system of music better. And also, if you are uh, getting into the film industry, yes, the, your throw will be better. You can <coughs> sing those songs with them. Um, all those small, small nuances, you know, you can perform it. Your voice will totally help you there. Yeah, anything else? Oh, when one person asks a question, that's when the others warm up. So, I mean, see, my, my, my feeling is very simple. I'm here as an expert to talk to you. I'm, I'm getting down to your level and I'm able to explain what you want. So, I want you to go back from here with a, a clear and happy idea of Carnatic music. So, if there is anything else that you wish to ask, please do so. Because all the three questions were amazing. See, qu questions help us think in, a, in that direction, right? So, done? Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Prahalad, for inviting me. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, that was. Um,
very nice to have uh, in such a short time uh, summarize something that is so vast and so deep and i think all of us uh, uh, whatever level we've come from uh, we have something to take away from the session uh, thank you very much ma'am we'll have uh, a dance performance a bhatnatyam dance performance by ananya